That effing guy. I mean, that FN2187. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails, a grand arena story. It's 5v5 finally and we have a double header I'm, a, I'm putting out today it was the final episode of the last season and now this one. This one is cool because we get to see a Supreme Leader Kylo Phasma Bomb which is a very interesting squad. You guys can see it here in the thumbnail and you get to see me do some interesting things regarding it i don't know what happens i actually do that was a bold-faced lie i'm very bold let's get to the situation i'm basing someone named tomford he's actually a regular viewer he watches my streams and he's probably a better player than me if we're just being honest look at the advantage i have all the green means i have more than him i actually have almost more than two million gp than him he, he plays very well we're in the top I think I'm number, yeah, number 61, it looks like, at least as of this compare. He was number 63, so we got paired. The way we get paired is, if you look at the very bottom, you can see the Datacron analysis, how many rerolls he's had. He has purchased quite a few rerolls. He has better Datacrons than I do, and that's an issue this entire match. He just has all the dodge. It's very, very tricky, and it's the it's the balancing factor. It's the one thing that it's like, oh, I can't, can't compete with with that and it's it's very interesting folks I mean what happens when you have a 100% dodge datacron that you can just put on a squad and if they wouldn't normally win they can win over time because your opponent the, the defensive team just can't hit you it's very interesting uh, way of playing it's very similar to the what what I'm trying to do with my professor X just a, a different style of it so here's my defenses I actually didn't change anything from the last 5v5 season I didn't have time to scout my opponent all the territory battle stuff had just been released and trying to figure all that out is just a huge headache I mean it's it's a like good I guess but it's it's a lot of work and so I just left this roll I did upgrade my data crons however put some crons on these squads and stuff things and stuff and uh, my opponent then uh, when when the match actually came about you can see my opponent placed i really like these splits the the darth revan split with savage and tie fighter pilot is scary uh, and you know it has all the dodge and deflection there's the qui-gon team with 81 percent dodge the, the General Skywalker team is a bunch of armor, and look at all that 53% extra protection is brutal. You guys will see that. And then Malgus still has four Sith Empire characters, so still pretty quick. And then look at all that armor and health. It's a, like That extra health makes him hit so much harder. Up top is where he didn't place anything too crazy. Like he put, he put some like, I don't know if you'd call it cheese teams exactly, but... I mean, there's a lot of armor pen on that that Jedi training race squad, and the Mothra team is is just not good. But then Lord Vader has 80% dodge on him, and that I didn't write, I didn't put it down. But the the eighth brother or second sister, whatever that that Inquisition character is, has an effective 515 speed after all the bonuses from. Lord Vader, uh, it's, it's just totally crazy. Uh, and then the the Django squad is you know high armor and tenacity. It's it's fairly fairly intimidating. My opponent, despite having two million fewer GP than me, did not really sacrifice that much on defense, especially because they're an efficiency player. It's scary. So before we jump into the fighting, folks, just want to remind you if you want to support this channel for free all you've got to do is like subscribe and comment on the comment in the comment area comment anywhere guys i don't care but the comment area is where the algorithm is mounted uh, mounting regularly with the same on this at the same place is good for your health two out of three doctors agree probably like two out of two really but the third just doesn't know much about mounting He's a prude. So, let's jump in to the actual fighting, shall we? Let's do it. Whoa, madness. Okay, so we had to take out this Lord Vader team first. And oh, I guess we gotta push play here, don't we? 
We can't do any live stuff because I was listening to some fun Star Wars music live, but that would demonetize this whole operation. So, taking out this Lord Vader if we can. I have a Datacron that gives me plus 50% accuracy, and I have a 30% arrow on accuracy arrow on Kylo. So that means that that the 80% dodge on Lord Vader is probably not going to be applicable here. Lord Vader is probably not going to not going to do much to me in terms of dodge, I should say. He he could very well do things. Hey, look at that. We got Watt back. We're doing we're getting a we're getting a Watt done here, folks. <laughs> um you don't want to put weapons tech on a team with Supreme Leader Kylo. Uh, I guess you could put it on Zombie. That might be kind of funny. Just to give them turn meter. So that they shrank in, uh, whatever, in strength, in in girth. Gross. So, I mean, the, the goal here, of course, is just to take out this team, I guess. I mean... We want to kill the ads, and if we can kill everything else, that's great. Uh, my opponent actually, I should have shown, dang it. My opponent did attack, and he failed twice on my Lord Vader squad. And then I think on ships, he also failed twice, but he did full clear me. So he, he dropped a few banners, but at the end of the day, like, he, he's an efficiency player, and he's got some tricky teams, and I knew for a fact he was going to have a tricky team in the back zone. So... Here, we're just trying to ramp up our damage, though one thing that it's occurred to me lately is we, if, even if we ramp our damage up, the only damage that we're actually ramping with Kylo is, I mean, it's our mastery, which means we're actually just, like, our, our regular damage isn't being ramped. It, our critical damage is being ramped, but uh, one way or another. Yeah, we're, look at this, we're so close to death. But then we, we get our full ult. We get our ultimate, guys. And that was that was just what the doctor ordered. If they had had any more relics than they did, then it, we probably would have just died. So, oh man, if I just poked there, Lord Vader would be dead. And that would have been great. Did a basic, almost killed him here. And if I had done a basic there, maybe would have killed him as well. So a, a few different fails here and I died seems like maybe I could have done it okay so what I'm showing you here folks was what datacron I'm choosing to use with the troopers just trying to take out my opponent's team or Lord Vader and uh, here's the problem, he has 80% dodge, and I only have 50% accuracy available here. So hopefully we can actually hit, I mean, he's gonna dodge some, but we only, had to, we only had to hit twice with Dark Trooper, and we had a few more than two swings available anyway, so I took him out. Thank goodness, we wanted to save our bounty hunters here, folks, because this Malgus team seemed open to potential bounty hunting so we've got the the aura team and man looking at the speeds and everything i there's malgus actually beat my speeds by about one or two like it, it was it was pretty crazy it was like 415 and i was like 413 or it was something like that it wasn't i don't think it was those, those exact numbers but one way or another he he didn't manage to end me I, I took a datacron that let me that let me actually hit back so that i could get my contract faster potentially if things were going a little bit weird but once we once you disintegrate malgus the thing that you realize is that his lead still makes this team really really obnoxious because they, they have all of all that armor and everything so it's just just tough to take down i mean sith empire trooper even at relic seven man it's it's tricky it's a really good squad. I mean, and the thing, the other funny thing is, so my opponent is used to playing our, our entire zone, or our entire group has 11.1 uh, million GP or higher. I have 10.6 and my opponent is like 8.7. So we're, we're kind of like the, we're like the welterweight division. We're not, we're not getting much accomplished really. Like we're, we're, <laughs> we're struggling uh, to, to even compete at all. So, uh, you know. It just takes a while for my 
minimum relic characters to chew through these guys. And at the end of the day, okay, we have two and a half minutes left. We have more than half our time, and Malgus is dead. Like, all of the big threats are gone, except, of course, Marauder is is super scary. In fact, just trying to get some turn meter from Zam here. May as well just put evasion down on him for no apparent reason. Uh, but, but yeah, we, we just need crits from... Mando, and once we get crits, then we were able to just disintegrate whoever we want, and the hope is, of course, that we're able to disintegrate uh, most of them, because, I mean, as of right now, if, if Mando were to just mysteriously die somehow, gosh, I should have just killed Marauder there, honestly. I mean, I guess Basti was messing with us in terms of debuffs, but, um, yeah, I think Marauder's a bigger threat, honestly. A couple lucky hits on Mando, and he just shut us down. The lead is just making it so that we can't kill anything. Because remember, when we when we put some kind of status effect on them, they regrow 10% health and protection, and uh, you know that that persists even when Malgus is dead. So you can see, uh, Sith Empire Trooper just keeps regrowing it because we're also we're putting the debuffs down, but he has so much such high armor on these characters that. It, it, we just like can't do enough. Like we're doing less than ten thousand damage per hit, even against a relic seven Sith Empire trooper. So we're just hitting auto for a while, because we don't have. We have like thirty five seconds left, and we need to get. And we need to just get the cycle through and have Mando disintegrate yet another. So he killed all five of them. Mando did. <laughs> I mean, not ideal, but it did work out. Obviously, you can see there and now all right so this is another one general skywalker has double his protection and he has double his uh armor i don't know if double is the right word like 80 something percent armor something like that so we need to drop him down and the idea is i mean we have the really fast data cron that gives us a ton of turn meter on the inquisition so the the hope is of course that we're going to be able to take these guys down uh and the problem here is, yeah, we're generating lots of turn meter for ourselves. That's wonderful. But we're not doing enough damage to Skywalker. And some people have been telling me I've getting, I'm getting bad RNG with my Inquisition. And I'm just going to say that in reality, if we're facing a bunch of people with Relic 8 and above characters, and all my Inquisition is, like I have Grand Inquisitor at what, seven, and the rest are at five, bare minimum, then, I don't know if it's bad luck, honestly, like, we're just kind of, it's kind of just, this is how it should be, right? I mean, realistically, we're, we should just be getting, I should just get be getting hammered. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, all right, all right, so... Here's the problem, folks. He got up and immediately, a lot of times you can get, you can arrange it so that you have turn meter overflow, so he stands up and then you get a few turns to hit him, but he keeps doing enough hits on us that he actually just keeps, uh, I mean, <laughs> he keeps being able to increase our cooldowns with his AoE, and we're not doing enough damage here. Like, he's... Ninth Sister is on, on her deathbed, and I can just do basics. That's all I have available. And it, it's looking like Skywalker might just solo the entire team. Even though he's a Skywalker, he might just solo us. And, I mean, it's like, what option do we have? We just have the option to hit him, is, is all we can do. Finally, we got days on him, and call it good. 53 banners, though. Whew. It's rough, man. It's not a good score. <laughs> Most people get like a 65 there. All right, we got Qui-Gon here, and I, I needed to find something that could actually off-meta this in terms of like, I didn't want to use a GL. Remember, we have four GLs on defense right now. So I needed something that could take the squad out, potentially, because my opponent got a really good score. We can't afford to fail very often. We've already failed once on Lord Vader. And so I'm trying to figure out how to crack this. This is a, a super speed... Qui-Gon team, they're all, well, at least the 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 ones on the right-hand side, Qui-Gon, Anakin, and Kitty Mundi, are all over 380 speed, which, uh, I mean, you know, and they're, they're, they're crazy modded, like, it's, it's just very scary. They don't have the crazy high relics that you kind of associate with the top 50, but, but Tom is, you know, he still has a very effective roster and everything, and then uh, the, the problem here is... 
<laughs> okay, so Anakin just did his AoE at least. So uh, the next hit he'll do is just a basic. And then he swung at Revan, and everyone's like, oh, you got so lucky, he missed. And I got lucky that he targeted Revan, but Revan actually had Foresight on him. And so I, I did manage to kind of, kind of just, uh, I don't know, twist the situation in my favor a little bit the, the whole time by by not, you know, by being able to, to stun people when I needed to, by being able to... Uh, you know, I think I think Revan would have just died there if Anakin had been allowed to hit him. So, so that was that was lucky. He was Anakin only hit the only guy with foresight. But otherwise, I mean, unless Anakin had deleted Luke, which I don't know, he he might have honestly. Then I think otherwise we we did okay. I'm trying to get more banners here. I'm getting greedy, but such is life. 63 banners. Got through that crazy team, and I don't know, maybe I got a little lucky. Maybe I just played it super skilled. And then, to start the Revan comp, I was I was like, okay, we've gotten enough off metas. Uh, like, I, he's got something in the back, but Sith Eternal should be able to handle it. I also had Dash available, and then I think I had Darth Vader as well. So I was like, whatever he has in the back, I think I should be able to handle it. So let's take out Savage real quick. And then, you know, TIE Fighter Pilot the whole time, of course, is just just hitting me every single time he has the opportunity. Because he takes a bonus turn every time. And we just need to snipe him out. Please, please, someone. There we go. Got him. Alright. Darth Revan feared us. That was uh, about as rude as it gets, if you ask me. Now I do have a Kron right now that gives us 50% extra protection, which means we're doing a crazy amount of damage here. We can't assist, call assists against Darth Revan, which is pretty messed up. So we're kind of just waiting, because if we kill Darth Revan right now, Talon will just revive him anyways, so we may as well just wait for her to come out of hiding, snipe her out, and then you know, we'll try to regenerate some of our banners as much as we can, though it's, it's not looking likely that we're able to. Jolie, Jolie does more damage just by doing a hit, and then, you know, Grandmaster Yoda snipes him out, and so that, that Darth Revan team even took out five banners from my from my Galactic Legend use, but we did one-shot that, well, we went one-shot the bottom zone, the top zone is where Lord Vader was, and that's obviously where we, where we failed. So in the back, he's got this Supreme Leader Kylo team with Phasma Kron, and for some reason I had just forgotten that Phasma Kron could be used even if she's not in the leader slot. So it's just like one of those teams that will delete you real, real quick if you don't, uh, you know, and even though they delete themselves kind of over time, like they, they do, they have so much offense that they almost never let you even have a turn. And if they don't let you have a turn, then it doesn't matter if they, they're deleting their... their team uh, over time you know like there there's protection and health just doesn't matter so anyways what we've got to do here is i had sith eternal and i, I couldn't figure out the right comp for sith eternal and uh, what i wanted to do there and so what i ended up deciding to do was we're gonna kill everything first including ships and see if we can risk a two shot because Dash will be able to get turns at least and hopefully kill the adds, and then I can finish off Supreme Leader Kylo with a few different teams if I needed to, including like Commander Luke, or, uh, you know, we, we could use Luke, we could use uh, Sith Eternal Squad if uh, enough adds were left alive, etc. So, I mean, that's... That's the thought, is we need to use teams that wouldn't finish off Supreme Leader Kylo, if necessary. And, I mean, this Bad Batch team is taking a little bit on Nest, but you, it's, it's fairly simple once you get the hang of it. You just don't want to get rid of her turn meter. You need to use moves that don't get rid of her turn meter and uh, keep that healing immunity and stun on her as much as you can so that she's not regenerating her stuff. And then eventually she'll take a turn. You don't want to do a basic with Hunter because that decreases turn meter, for instance. And so she eventually takes a turn here. And then you can just drop her with massive single fire damage from Omega. 
Well done, Omega. You're gonna be a star one day. Like, literally, I, you're not gonna be a moon, you'll be a star. What do you think about that? You know, that? That's apparently my belief system, is that people eventually turn into planetary bodies. That's not actually what I believe, but, you know. It's good to start rumors. All right, these guys have a bunch of tenacity, in case you didn't notice. And Grievous is a messy counter here. However, the idea is we do ramp our potency pretty nicely. I think I put a potency cron on them. And, of course, they, they also have the, the damage immunity uh, cron on them. So it's, it takes a while to take them out. Trying to figure out exactly what to do. Okay, so we're ramping enough. We're ramping enough uh, potency so that we're actually applying target lock to some people. There goes Boba. Finally, all the so Boba, Jango, and Cyan of Jango are all in the same. Sounds like a joke. Boba Fett, Cyan of Jango, and Jango Jango walk into a bar. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> uh, anyways. Yeah, we're, I do like that Grievous Squad, like, even if it's a mess, a lot of times it turns out to be, well, sometimes it can be ru ruinous banners, but you never get max banners with that squad, but you can usually do, you can usually do okay. Now, Cara Dune was uh, not on this squad, and they, they only have gear 12 on a couple of them as well, so it's not so bad. May as well just just use a Mon Mothma mirror match because I had a faster Katarn, I think, and I have all the turn meter. And they have Biggs here, which if we can delete Biggs before he takes a ton of turns and gets Mon Mothma going, then we're good to go. 65 banners, pretty easy stuff. All right, and then the back zone has Supreme Leader Kylo and then two garbage squads. However, we have to take out this fleet zone first, and he did put the FU fleet defense down. No fun. No thank you, sir. And one thing I'll note here, guys, is the, this match is a bit harder and harder for me lately because a lot of people are really investing in their pilots, trying to get their pilots as high, uh, you know, as resilient as possible. And Tom just doesn't have that because he has a smaller account. I, I don't have that because I have a smaller account. But that, that if you want to know where the arms race currently is, if you want to know what people are putting Relic 9s are, it's not on characters that make impacts on squads. I mean, they, they do. They, people do that. But the, the big emphasis right now is putting it on pilots. Like, I was just watching some people face off each, with each other, and they both had Relic 9, Han, and Chewie. Just because Falcon becomes more resilient when that happens. And... Yeah, it's it's pretty scary. This obviously, like I said, that's not really happening in this particular fight. But that yeah, the 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 fleets are actually dying here, which is which the ships are actually dying here, which is nice. It's a nice change to see. I mean, it, it's still pretty scary here. They haven't killed any of my ships yet, though surprisingly. You guys have seen me do this counter a lot. Like this, this is probably just going to be a pretty common thing now. So, what I, the problem is, once once you start escalating things in terms of like trying to get your your defensive fleets uh, up and running, then you have to start your opponents start trying to like it's just this big arm race. Everyone needs to put more and more relics on their pilots, and it's a mess. I don't I don't prefer it. But we did get pretty good banners there, actually, guys. 70 banners is nice. This is a really tricky counter here, guys, with Finalizer can counter this, obviously. That's why I'm trying it. However, they, they almost always get the taunt with Houndstooth, and that is the problematic part. There's not, as far as I know, there's not really a great way to prevent him getting the, the taunt here. Like, we could, but then if we... We can pass the turn to Silencer right now uh, to hopefully just get the kill on IG. If we don't do that, we could we could just block Houndstooth ability block, but then Razorcrest could call Houndstooth to assist, which makes it a big mess anyways. 
So that, there's not really a great solution. I mean, that, that's why people use this comp most of the time. And I decided if I can kill IG first, then uh, you can you can manage Houndstooth eventually. Like Houndstooth eventually just, just disappears to the pressures of Finalizer. Finalizer does crazy damage eventually and ramps up. So that's it's not really something like this huge issue. It's a little bit of an issue though. Uh, because we can't we can't hit anyone else, and you know, so you just keep handing the turn to silencer. And yes, that felt kind of crappy to almost have final or have Hound's, Hound, Hound's tooth down, and then have it heal all the way. But at the end of the day, I mean, we're doing okay. We're, we're doing, I mean, maybe not great, but. Uh, yeah, just dispel some of that stuff, I guess. We're doing okay because Silencer, if if he gets another turn, he can just one-shot, probably. Close. So close. Man, come on. All he's got is really bonus protection, so Ebonhawk actually got the kill. And now, we got the stun there. Try to get the stun there, and death via stunning. I like to think that Xanadu Blood was stunned there before it died, you know? That, that's that's the, the thought that I like. So, they're just whittling down our banners, but if we can get one more big hit, then we should be okay. There we go. Just barely okay. Dropped 10 banners, but got the one shot there. Once again, if they had crazy high relics on all of their pilots, probably wouldn't have survived that whole time, but it worked out. So I did a big hit on Biston just to see if we can kill Biston real quick. Didn't really pan out for us. I don't know, I, I was probably pretty, pretty foolish to try that because no one's ever been able to do it to my Biston, but you know, what's a man to do but act foolishly at times? So, just keep trucking, keep going, keep going. I mean, Plo comes in and saves the day all the time, all day, every day. This is not a good fleet yet. Hopefully we get Red 5 or some similar thing to help the fleet along. Seems like Red 5 would fit pretty well, pretty in, fit in pretty well with the theme that they're going with, the, cur the current territory battle. So, we actually did pretty decent in fleets, which meant we could afford to do a double tap on Supreme Leader Kylo if we needed to. I, I did have an idea about Supreme Leader Kylo, so here's the comp that I used. I wanted to use Ban Bando here instead of Vandor, just because Bando would be able to keep Dash alive beyond the... like. like because Kylo would be able to hit really hard, right? Uh, we, we wanted, we want the damage immunity more than anything else. So, put days on everyone if we can, and then of course Kylo, Kylo just, uh, you know, cleansed everyone. So that wasn't cool. But yeah, we're keeping Dash alive. That's he's the guy we want to keep alive right now with damage immunity and everything. Um, and then uh, Crew is being a huge pain, so we got to kill him. And then he stuns L3, almost kills her. And then I'm like, okay, what do we want to do? Like, the idea was if I could just kill all the adds and I could just finish off Kylo on his on my own. And then I realized they take a lot of worthless turns here. So uh, I think what we could do, because I could take a bonus turn every single time one of them takes a turn, then I, I could just uh, snipe out Supreme Leader Kylo, which is exactly what I did. And then the rest of them is, is fairly easy to take out. I mean... 59 banners to kill a Supreme Leader Kylo with, with the fa new fancy Phasmacron. Not too bad. Not too bad. And now we just have to not crap the bed against these other teams. It's, uh, you know, FN2187 is here and he is not loving life right now. He and Poe met the fate he deser they deserved at the hands of the First Order there. There we go. We killed the First Order, and they were like, yay, we're saved, and then we killed them, too. We're like, yeah. So notice, uh, I kept that screenshot in there just because I kept, I, I had uh, Sith Eternal available, and I decided 
just to mess with people. I don't think it's even going to do that much, frankly. But I figured if I could just somehow just take out the... Um, if, I, if I could just kill that squad with... Uh, if I could kill all of his stuff without using Sith Eternal, that might mess people mess with people scouting a little bit. Um, so, anyways, there's there's the final score, folks. We we ended up getting the win by about what, 41 banners. So, uh, yeah, let's let's jump down to my final thoughts here, shall we? If we can. All right. So at some point, I will figure this out. There we go. So. Uh, and please excuse the top. I know it's not against Tom. It doesn't have Tom's name, but uh, that I didn't take a final, final screenshot here. So it was a stressful match. Tom had some good defensive comps. It was, it was tricky, especially because of the first match in 5v5 after a while. So I had to remember what good counters we had. We had to gamble a little bit with that. Bounty Hunter team against Malgus. It, it, was, it was good. And Tom... I mean, two, 2 million below, I mean, he had great Datacrons, he had all that dodge on all kinds of places, and uh, it, it was it was kind of scary, honestly. There, there was a lot of question marks to be found, and, or to be had, and at the end of the day, you know, we managed to get through it, but you know, Tom did play very well. He, he's... Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to find out that he won his last, his next match, even though everyone else is another million of GP above where I'm at. So, anyways, I, I did get the win, and I'm back to the top 50, number 39, I think. And, yeah, we're back to it, folks. Hopefully we can continue to be back at it. I don't know. I know what happened in the next match. I won't spoil it for you, but at, at this point... Right now, I think I'm on either a four or five match winning streak, which is unprecedented, but fun. <laughs> Eventually, I'm sure it will come to a crashing end. That being said, folks, I'm going to call it there. Let me know what your thoughts are. Uh, do you love this new... Do you love the final set for 5v5? Are you excited to be done with it? I'm excited to be done with all the dodge. This was a little stressful. We got through it, though, folks. All right. Calling it good. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zeros prevails.